Are we actually, are we streaming? I don't see the normal notification. Sorry, everyone. It should be, I'll just double check. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, it just doesn't say live on YouTube in the corner. Carrie? I'm still working on it, but we're live on boston.gov and we're live on-, um, on No, no, Pop it's fine, it's now. fine, I'll wait. I'd rather, I know, you know, I'd rather people be able to watch it on the YouTube. Morning, Kenzie. Morning, Councillor Braden. Nice to see you. Good to see you. It's a cheerful pink. Yes, it's a day for big pink. <laughs> I rotate through my my rainbow of colors. I tend yeah. to go on the I tend to go on the dark side, but when the sun shines, I have to have pink or something bright. <laughs> there you go. I mean, personally, I'm shades of gray today, but oh well. <laughs> it seems as if we're having an issue connecting to YouTube at, at, within the Zoom, but we are streaming on YouTube via Boston.gov, so I think we're we're good to go. Okay, great. Thanks, Carrie. All right, I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna call this hearing of the Boston City Council's Ways and Means Committee to order. Um, for the record, my name is Kenzie Bach. I'm also the District 8 City Councilor um, and the Chair of the Ways and Means Committee. This public hearing is being recorded and live streamed at boston.gov slash city-council-tv. It will be rebroadcast on Xfinity Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, and Verizon Fios Channel 964. Um, we will be taking public testimony at the end of this hearing, and I know we've got a few folks signed up. Um, if you're watching and you want to testify via video conference, please email shane, S-H-A-N-E dot pack, P-A-C, at boston.gov. That's shane dot pack at boston.gov, um, and Shane will sign you up. And we just ask when we call folks that you state your name and affiliation or residence and uh, limit your comments to just a couple of minutes so that we can get everybody in. If you're and not able to join us in the Zoom, um, or you watch this after and you want to submit written testimony, you can do that by emailing ccc.wm at boston.gov. That's ccc.wm for ways and means at boston.gov. Today's hearing is on docket 0687, message and order approving an increase of the cost of living adjustment, COLA, base from $14,000 to $15,000 for all retirees and beneficiaries of the Boston retirement system. Um, and uh, I'm pleased to be joined here today by my colleagues, uh, Councillor Liz Braden of District 9 and Councillor Michael Flaherty at large, um, and also by uh, Mr. Timothy Smith, who is the Executive Officer of the Boston Retirement Board. And I see also, sorry, we've also been joined by Councillor Andrea Campbell of District 4. Um, so thank you to my colleagues. I think um, we will uh, probably go straight to uh, Mr. Smith for his introduction of this of this matter, and then I'll go to the colleagues for questions. Um, uh, Tim, you have the floor. Thank you so much. 
Um, again, my name is Timothy Smith. I'm the executive officer here with the Boston Retirement System. Just by way of background, I'd like to point out that the cost of living adjustment, or COLA, and COLA base uh, are two distinct functions. The COLA is a percentage, and the COLA base is a multiplier. Today, we multiply the 3% COLA by a COLA base of $14,000 which equates to an annual COLA benefit of $420 for retirees and beneficiaries whose benefit uh, either matches or exceeds the $14,000. That COLA benefit is built into the retirement benefit and aggregates year after year. As to the COLA, each January, PERAC, the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission, our regulator, issues a COLA notice indicating what the COLA may be without approval. It is largely driven by the Social Security Administration. This year, it was 1.3%. However, with approval of the council, Massachusetts law allows a COLA up to 3%. Boston has issued a 3% COLA during my entire time on the board. Uh, and in fact, it is built into our actuarial valuation as, as a cost. As to the COLA base, in 2010, the legislature added section 103J, which allows boards to increase the COLA base in increments of $1,000 with approval of city council. Since then, the board has voted to increase the COLA base three times by $1,000 increments from 12,000 to the current 15,000 that is on the table for discussion today. We did so on May 22nd, 2012, June 21st, 2017, and just recently on May 19th, 2021. As to the financial health of the system, I'd note that as of 1-1-2020, which was our last actuarial valuation, our actuarial value of assets exceeded $5.7 billion. This does not include approximately $1.6 billion invested with PRIM that covers Boston school teachers. Our funded ratio on an actuarial basis was 75.6%. We're currently scheduled to be fully funded in 2027. Our current year-to-date investment return stands at 7.2% net of fees. Our investment return for calendar year 2020 was 11.9% net of fees. Uh, and a little background on our, on our membership. As of 1120, the average age of our retiree, and there were 6,380, is 73.9 years old. And the average monthly benefit is $3,227. The average age of our disability retiree, and there were 1,612, is 69.3 years old. And the average monthly benefit for the disability retiree was $4,433. The average age of our beneficiary recipients, they were 1,787, is 76.9 years old. And the average monthly benefit is $2,041. These figures exclude school teachers who are a liability of the Commonwealth. Um, to illustrate our monthly obligations, I'd note that our May 2021 pension payroll was issued to over 15,300 payees with a payout of approximately $57 million. Additionally, the system issued refunds on behalf of 50 members totaling over $1.4 million. That was all just in the month of May, 2021. Uh, back to the COLA base, by increasing the COLA base to $15,000, it will cause an increase of the appropriation approximately $5.6 million to near $371 million, or an increase of 1.54%. It will increase the estimated unfunded liability by $30.7 million, or 1.7%, in the employer normal cost by approximately $696,000, or 0.8%. As to this year's cola base vote, I note that the board uh, gave notice to the council on 3-22-2021. We had public comment on April 28th, 2021, 
and the board voted to increase the COLA base on May 19th, 2021. Uh, not only did we accept uh, live, well, as live as you can get on Zoom, testimony, uh, we did receive many, including from the council, uh, letters uh, urging the board to increase the COLA base. In, 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 in a nutshell, that, that is um, how the COLA base uh, was, was voted on for $15,000. Unless you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Tim, can you send um, all of those numbers? I, I will just say that in general, when we're talking about fiscal things and numbers, I really like for the committee to have things formally submitted like that in writing, just because it's hard for counselors to track. Absolutely. All those details as you speak. Sure. Um, so if you could get those to Chantal and over to us, that would be great. Um, so just in, in let me let, let me just try because I want to make sure that I understand this in plain language for folks. Um, and then I'll, I'll pass it over to colleagues. Um, so cost of living adjustment is it's an acknowledgement within our pension system that people's costs go up. Right. And so that we're trying to we're trying to support our long-term retirees as kind of they deal with, you know, inflation and other cost increases. And what I understood you to be saying is there's sort of two ways in which we do that in Boston. And one, I mean, well, no, there's two components to the way in which we do that. And one is sort of like, what's the factor? And we've been doing consistently that, cons that 3% factor. And that's sort of, you know, that's technically a choice, right? But it's a choice that we're making every year. Um, and, and then, and it's, and because we're making it every year, we've actually built it into all of our models around our pension liability. Right. So even though we're deciding it again and again, it's already in that number that we're, that we're sort of solving for in terms of when we'll be fully funded. Am I right so far? Yes. Okay. And then that percentage, you don't get the cost of living increase on your entire annual pension. You get it on the sort of like initial like core of your pension. So up to $14,000 today, right? Exactly. And, so, exactly. and so what we're doing is adding, we're, we're making that instead. Now you're going to get it on your $15,000. And of course this is like a, that what that means is that COLA adjustments most sort of the impact of them are felt the most by people with comparatively smaller pensions, at least proportionately, because if I've got a, if I've, if I've just got a $15,000 or let's say right now I have a $14,000 pension from us, we I get the cola on the whole thing. But if I've got a hundred thousand dollar pension from us, I get the cola just on the first 14,000. So it's the same amount of money I'm getting, but in proportion to the overall money I'm getting from the city of Boston, it's, it's a bigger deal as it were for our, for our smaller pension holders. Is that a sort of fair care? I think that's an accurate statement. I, I know that that was certainly who I heard from the most were folks who were kind of, you know, folks who had been who were retired teachers who had maybe been part-time or stuff. And so therefore, have these smaller pensions with us. Um, and so, and so we can, that base today, it's 14,000. We're permitted by the legislature to have that base that we multiply the 3% by go all the way up to 18,000. Right. Uh, actually it, it, you can go up to any, any number, but it just has to be by increments of a thousand dollars. So where did I get the eighteen thousand? Was that just an ask that was in? The I don't, you know, I honestly don't know. I, I want, I'm wondering if that was in a bill at one point because I, I hear that regularly and I try to correct people, but I hear it so much it's almost become uh, urban legend. But it, it can go up to any amount, and I do have um, the state. Perak has a list of all the boards and where they are with cola. And I don't, I, I don't see anybody exceeding. I'm just running my finger down the list. The highest number I see is eighteen thousand dollars. Now that may be a function that when we started this, I think the statute had had it at twelve, and people just go up slowly. You know, we've only been doing this since two thousand ten, and so that may be it. I don't know, but when you look at the statute. It doesn't say you stop at eighteen thousand dollars. 
Yeah, and I can I, do some more research to make sure that's correct, but that's been my understanding from years. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll also try to find, I, I think when I had dug into it a month or two ago, I, I had found something with the 18,000 number. And so I'll try to find what that was, but I think there may be some, some regulatory documents sitting out there on one of the state websites that has that number in it. And whether that's accurate or, or passed or not, I don't know, but it is something I think we should probably figure out. Um, but I hear you. Okay. So, but to your understanding, the statute doesn't have that, that limit, but for folks, it definitely, like, it definitely, definitely doesn't. I have it right in front of me. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's helpful. Okay. And then, and then, but for folks watching at home, right. I mean, you know, obviously the, well, why would we not multiply the cost of living adjustment by as much of the base pension as possible? And it has to do with the fact that when we do that, when we increase this, right, it's not factored into our unfunded pension liability today. So it drives that unfunded pension liability up. And, and the unfunded pension liability is something that the city of Boston has made a major effort to pay down over time. And right, that just means unfunded pension liability is how much money have we promised to our retirees that we don't actually have sitting there available to them. Um, Essentially, yes. Right. And so, and so my understanding is that, um, and so anytime we increase this, we're increasing the total payments that we owe to everybody. And so that number becomes bigger and goes out. And the council, and the, you know, the council as a fiduciary has to think about the fact that We've also got an enormous OPEB unfunded liability, which is around our the healthcare that we need to provide our retirees with, and we can't really start even seriously paying that down um, until we've funded the pension liability. So that's part of the push pull here. And can you, therefore, Tim, can you describe a little bit more with this with this thousand dollar increase that the that the board is recommending that we vote for? The how much how much does that add? this year to the pension costs how much does it add in the overall unfunded liability and how much does that push our um does our does that push our projected final funding date out to it, it won't it as of today it's not going to touch our fully funded date okay um i do have what they call a, a schedule which was attached to the cost memo which has all that detail but i can tell you um in 2022 the appropriations from the city increased 5.6 million, and then it goes upwards to uh, 7.6 million in 2027. Goes up in increments each year. Got it. And, and can I just point, make one comment as well? Although the council uh, does approve this, I, I, I think it's worthy of note that it's not just the city of Boston. We, we we are the retirement system for the Boston Redevelopment Authority or public. Planning Development Agency, Boston Housing, Water and Sewer, Public Health. So what we decide here will impact those employers as well. And to some extent, the Commonwealth, because we, we're the only system in the state that has teachers, but the teachers are a liability of the Commonwealth. So we would essentially be sending a bill downstream to the Commonwealth. So and I do, just so you know, I do put, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I do put them on notice every year uh, that we're, we're considering COLA and COLA base, just so they know that, you know, we could potentially be increasing their liability. And did the Commonwealth or any of the institutions you mentioned weigh in in this process or no? No. And just so I understand, basically what you're saying is this, this sends our our budget for next year up $5.6 million. And I saw that in the resubmission, right? So the the, the um, administration's resubmitted budget would, would fund this other 5.6 million, assuming that we, that we pass this. Um, but what you're saying is, of course, there's also costs to the BHA and the Commonwealth and the BPDA and such. And those are in addition, but they're going to be paid off of their books, right? Correct. Got it. Um, and and our pension funding date did it with the pandemic? Did it go from 2025 to 27? I'm trying to remember what the we did it. Um, we actually did it last year, so I don't. Uh, um, and it wasn't really a pandemic decision. Um, I think we we were well. I shouldn't say that. It, it was consider that was a cons ultimate consideration because we didn't know where the market was going to go. We had a lot of there were a lot of concerns. Uh, I have to go back to my minutes to, to see exactly the rationale, but that my memory is that was a major discussion. 
Got it. Who, yeah. Obviously, as you remember, March of 2020, the market tanked. And that impact yes. adversely impacted our returns. Yes, no, I do remember, although it's recovered since, but we all had to make conservative decisions at the time. Correct. Um, uh, and did, um, and sorry, did you, you said a number that I think was the net amount that we thought it was increasing our unfunded liability? Yep. Well, yep, I have an idea. $30.7 million. 30.7, okay. And then last question for me, and then I'll go to colleagues. Um, can you speak to like what roughly, and this is more of a scale sense than a specific, um, but like what, when you think about the folks who are in the Boston retirement system, what proportion of them are kind of at these, like the, the smaller pensions that are closer to the kind of COLA total, like limit total that we're talking about here? Versus, because to me, there's sort of a distinction. Obviously, people get different scales of pensions depending on what their salaries were at the city or related agencies. But there's folks who are getting a kind of like what we would think of as a sort of full pension um, that's sort of comparable or at 80% or whatever of, of what they were making. And then there's and then there's folks who have these more partial things. And I know those are a number of the folks who we heard from about hardship. So I just would love to understand from you kind of what the proportions feel like in the system. Yeah, if the counselor wishes, I can actually run a query and get those right down to the penny. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't have the numbers available, but I can do a query and get all that, you know, the range. Some Anybody who's got a benefit, say from zero to 10, 11 to 20 or whatever you think is helpful, we can do. Uh, I just want to add some of those lower uh, benefits. Those may be cases where people either had very few years of service, they had part-time service, obviously their salary wasn't as high, that those things kind of come into play as well. So you yeah. could have a 10-year pers person that was a um, crossing guard, so they were working you know, X number of hours a day. Obviously, they're not... They're going to get an 80 percent pension if they're only working 10 years part time. Got it. So that, yeah. that's a factor. Yeah, I think it would be great to get if you could do that. And it's fine mm -hmm. for it to come after the hearing, sort of those tranches, just so we can understand how the beneficiaries are distributed in terms of how much they're getting from the system. That'd be great. And, and another thing to consider, Counselor, when uh, with beneficiaries, the uh, mass law automatically reduces the benefit a, a third. So if I'm the retiree, and I'll use myself as an example, and I pass, my wife would get two thirds of what I'm getting. So that benefits automatically dropping 33%. Mm -hmm. So you, when you see the beneficiaries versus the retirees, and I, they, those bore true in the numbers I gave at the beginning, they're gonna be markedly lower just by, bird, just by operation of law. Got it, great. Well, thank you, Tim, and thank you this, you know, I think, I think it's a really important job for us as the council to balance the, um, you know, the the fiscal health of the city and making sure that you know when we when we vote on things we're signing up for things that we can fund, and the you know the needs of our retirees and our our low income retirees and and the recognition that costs do increase over time. So, um, really appreciate you being with here to, with us today. I'm going to go now to council colleagues, um, and we've also been joined uh, a while back by Councillor uh, Julia Mejia at large and Councillor Ed Flynn in District 2. Um, I'm going first to uh, Councillor Liz Braden from District 9. Councillor Braden. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for your presentation. I'd really like to see the numbers on a piece of paper. <laughs> I, I, as Councillor Box mentioned, it's, it's hard to process all the information um, without having it right in front of me. Happy um, to do it. Thank you. Um, you know, I really, again, my, my concern is more for the lower, um, the folks who are on the lower end of the scale. Um, I know from talking with retired teachers, many of them, especially the fem female uh, teachers who maybe took breaks in service to take care of children or elders at some stage in their career, um, they're finding that that is having a, a pretty devastating effect on their retirement at this at this point when they're much older um i i don't know in terms of uh numbers do we have any do we have any sort of sense of what sort of numbers uh are we're talking about in that uh, in different cohorts again i think that's similar to the question that punch asked 
I don't have it committed to memory, but I will get that information. I have that at my fingertips. And you know, um, the the the, the one thousand dollar incremental increase. Um, we you 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 do the you folks run the numbers and and figure out what's doable. Uh, so the last time we had a an increase was in twenty seventeen. Um, were there particular reasons why we delayed increasing it? I know we're trying to spend, our, um, you know, to to fully fund our pension fund. Is, is that is that the the rationale for not increasing the the cola base um, more quickly? Right. I, I I think the I can't speak for the city, but I think the logic would be that um, it increases the costs exponentially, and we are trying to get to that fully funded date as soon as possible. Uh, Councilor Bach had mentioned earlier about OPEB. That's obviously another um, another issue that that will rear its ugly head sooner than later. Um, but I think that was the, the wish going back uh, several CFOs that the retirement system be fully funded. Then they kind of turn the, the turn the can into its OPEB. Okay. Very good. Well, responsible management of our fiscal health is very important and. Uh, helpful for the long-term stability of our, our city and our community. So thank you for your work. And uh, I have no other questions, Madam Chair. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Braden. Councillor Flaherty. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and good morning to everyone. Thank you to Timmy and uh, Pork who are on here. Um, I would like to express my full uh, in enthusiastic support for this cost of living adjustment uh, from 14,000 to 15 in advance of the uh, May 19th Boston Retirement Board vote, I wrote a letter of support and provided uh, testimony expressing my full support for even an even greater increase in the current cost of living adjustment. So I, uh, I understand that this vote will impact retirees of all city departments and agencies, and I strongly believe that uh, each and every individual who has served that city deserves uh, to be compensated fairly for the many years of service and also be allowed to retire uh, with dignity and uh, especially now with retirees and uh, encountering increasing hurdles of uh, their own financial uh, stability with uh, now being on a fixed income and that includes uh, prescription drugs, uh, insurance cost increases, uh, gas prices are going up, uh, their day-to-day -day bills and other expenses. So um, this hopefully will, will, uh, will go a long way in helping uh, relieve a little bit of that pressure. So. Uh, the affordable update uh, to the to the annual COLA calculation is of, of paramount importance to, to me, but more important to these retirees than the many advocates who reached out uh, on their behalf. So uh, again, uh, thanks to to Tim uh, and to uh, Pork and uh, Madam Chair, just please uh, put me in the uh, enthusiastically support this cost of living adjustment. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Um, and I will just note for folks that, you know, in addition to this authorizing thing, we are going to need the additional $5.6 million allocation that's in the resubmitted budget to make this a reality. So just flagging that for folks. Um, next up uh, is uh, Councillor Campbell. Um, and I'll send the order for Councillors. Councillor Campbell. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bach. And Tim, thank you and your team for your hard work, particularly, of course, during COVID. I also sent in a letter of support and appreciated your breakdown at the beginning of this hearing and we'll look for some follow-up numbers, uh, but echo what my colleagues have said. Um, you know, obviously our city employees work really hard. It's been a difficult time for everyone. So really appreciate uh, your hard work and I'll keep it short and sweet. I have to jump to another Zoom, but did want to quickly uh, speak out in support. And Councilor Bach, thank you for the request you've made. Look for the follow-up numbers. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Campbell. Um, next up, Councillor Mejia, and then it'll be Flynn and then Asabi George. Councillor Mejia. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I would like to echo the um, comments of my colleagues. I am also in full support. Um, I do believe, you know, I always talk about the fact that my mom is in her 70s and too poor to retire. Um, and I understand how important this issue is for those who have dedicated their entire lives. Um, and in service. And so we've been on the record in full in full support and um, look forward to moving the conversation along. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Mejia. Uh, next up, Councillor Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, Council Bach, and apologize for being late to this meeting. Um, I'll certainly review the 
be filed um, later this afternoon to hear the testimony from, from Tim. But I just wanted to say on the record that we have an exceptional team that Tim works with at the retirement board. They're professional, they're hardworking, and they know this system as well as anyone. So very honest and ethical people. So I want to say thank you to Tim and his team um, that do tremendous work making sure that our retirees are treated with respect and dignity. Like Councilor Flaherty mentioned, I also support a COLA increase. I also was on record and filed, sent a letter of support as well. Um, our retirees, whether the city, re city retirees or state retirees, they're our neighbors, they're our, they're our Little League coaches, they're active in the veterans community, they help after school with our kids, but they're part of our community and I'm so proud of the city and state retirees that play a tremendous role in our communities. And um, I support this, not 100%, I support it 200%. So I just wanted to say thank you to Tim and his dedicated and professional team at the retirement board. Th um, thank you, Council Buck. Thank you, Councilor Flynn. Uh, Councilor uh, Asabi George. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Tim, and um, colleagues on this uh, call this morning. I am, you know, will echo the sentiments of colleagues in support of the COLA increase. And um, although I've tuned in late, I because I've tuned in late, I won't say much more than that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Councilor Bach. Great. Thank you, Councilor Asabi George. Um, all right. Any other counselors have further further questions or comments? Because um, I know we've got several members of the public who are here to testify and the Boston Municipal Research Bureau. Um, we we will look for those uh, that those numbers, both the tranches, Tim, and just kind of a written version of some of the summary that you gave. Um, and again, just uh, obviously just stressing for counselors that this is something where you know where. We do this increase; it does result in, in a greater unfunded pension liability, and um, and does require additional funding this year, uh, five point six million for this year, which again is in the budget resubmission. It's not in last year's budget, um, so that's going to be a, a piece of the issue as we sort of I uh, figure out the budget over the next week. Um, but uh, but I think you know, uh, like many others, I uh, I suggested that. You know, our retirees, like many folks, have had a tough year, and if we're able to support them um, in affording, uh, you know, these cost of living, these real cost of living increases, um, it's a, it's a good thing for us to do. And I think I think going up by a thousand feels um, feels doable in terms of like the overall fiscal health of the city, and like it would mean a lot um, to to a lot of people, um, as as the councilors refer to. So, um, so I think it's a it's a good thing for us to be doing collectively and I will be recommending that we do it provided of course that we actually have the funding to execute on it. So, um, uh, Tim, did you have any other comments you wanted to offer before I go to the public testimony? The only thing I would, uh, offer two, two things. One, if this is done, uh, we obviously, we hope it is, um, it is a permanent expense. There's no going back. Uh, secondly, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't note that Justin Sterrett um, did send in support as well on behalf of the administration. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Great. All right. So now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go to public testimony, um, and the folks I have signed up on this docket. Um, I'll begin with uh, Connie. Thibode. And please correct me if I've mispronounced your name, Connie. Connie, you just have to unmute. All right, Connie, I'm going to give you another second and then we'll wait. We might go to the next person. All right. Um, I will go next to uh, Janie Frank. Janie? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Um, I'm Janie Frank. I am a member of the Boston Teachers Union uh, Retired Teachers Chapter Legislative Committee. I've also resided in Boston um, all 74 years of my life. Um, and um, I just, uh, and a shout out to um, you, um, Chairman Chairperson Bach and committee members and Mr. Smith. Um, and just before I start my testimony, I want you to know I have the breakdown on all of those numbers that you asked for, Mr. Smith. I can't see why you need to do another query. I'd be happy to email them to you. Okay, time for my <laughs> testimony. I have emailed each of the counselors and provided them with documentation I think they will find helpful in understanding the issues related to raising the COLA base and informing them in anticipation of the June 30th vote. All of the various retirees in the Boston retirement system serve this city well. Each of you knows many of them personally. They were your teachers, firefighters, police officers, school staff, workers in your own city hall offices, clerical workers, and the list goes on. They are the people who built this city and upon whom you and we depended. They deserve dignity, respect, and fairness. So let me remind you of a few important data. There are just over 12,500 Boston retirees. The average pension is $45,876. Sadly, approximately one third of our retirees receive less than $30,000 a year, the amount the so-called living wage of $15 an hour would yield. A $1,000 raise in the COLA base translates to $30 per retiree per year, or if you prefer, $2.50 a month. We have seen the COLA base increase only two times since 1997. This is largely in part due to a myriad of efforts of our committee that we pursued. We've offered a proposal to restructure the way in which the COLA base is determined and have invited the city to do the same, yet we still await an actuarial study of our proposal. We invite members of this committee to join us in continuing that pursuit. In summation, the board has always denied a fair increase because of a fully funding date, which in 2020 was moved forward from 2025 to 2027. The city can afford to join the 16 or more surrounding communities with COLA bases above $15,000. They continuously state their concerns about the cost of actuarial studies to determine the impact of increasing the COLA base. Granting an increase to $18,000 would save them those costs. Now is the hour. It is time for a fair COLA. Please vote yes on the 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Janie. Um, and uh, I see that I've got Connie back. So I'm going to see if Connie is available now. Um, yes, uh, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to read from the letter which I sent to the to um, Tim Smith, actually, uh, at the retirement board uh, this past April. Um, and uh, I, I write to him and the board, I am writing to you today in the hopes that you will approve for us a 3% COLA increase and raise the COLA base to $18,000. As a member of the Legislative Committee of the Retired Teachers Chapter of the Boston Teachers Union, and as a retiree on the low end of the pension scale, I am confident that I speak for all Boston retirees with pensions under $20,000. And for all those retirees whose pensions are between $14,000 and $18,000, it would also be particularly helpful if you would raise the COLA base from fourteen to $18,000 immediately. Um, bearing in mind the upending of our lives as we know them, which the pandemic has wrought upon all of us, it would be, in my opinion, it is a year when the raising of the COLA base and the granting of a 3% COLA are both especially urgent. I hope you agree. Please do decide to vote this year for the 3% COLA increase upon a COLA base raised to 18,000. And thank you so much for your caring attentiveness to this matter. Great, thank, thank you. you so thank you so much, Connie. Um, thank uh, you. Next up, we have uh, Marilyn Marion, uh, I believe from the Boston Teachers Union, and then um, we'll have Pam Coker from the Boston Municipal Research Bureau. Marilyn. Good morning, everyone. Um, Marilyn Marion, I am a member of Ward Twelve and District Seven. I rise for you today. Um, I am chair of the retired teachers chapter of the Boston Teachers Union, and I see firsthand the struggle of many of our members. 
I request this opportunity to stand before you to garner your support for the increase in the COLA base. Uh, to $15,000, but my real desire is $18,000, just as what Kwani just uh, said to you. As you know, the income of many of our city retirees is low, and given the increase in real estate taxes, rents, foods, and services, this request is far below the request, original request was 18000 but I'm still wishing and hoping that that would come about. However, this is an increase, and it looks like you're going to go with the 15. It, it is small. Jamie Frank gave you a breakdown and the need for the COLA base increase. So my need to repeat that information would be fruitless. I have written to the city council members prior to the retirement board uh, meeting in May. And again, yesterday, it is hope, my hope that you honor this request and the hope regrets of $18,000, but I know it doesn't look like it's going in that direction. Please to give consideration for this increase. Thank you. Great, thank you, Marilyn. Um, and now Pam Coker from the Boston Municipal Research Bureau. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to this issue. The Research Bureau supports an annual cost of living adjustment for fiscal year 2022. The Research Bureau opposes any increase in the COLA base because it would increase the pension liability and do so as we continue to grapple with the pandemic's impact on city finances and on members of the Boston community. As uh, Tim mentioned earlier, this would be $5.6 million for fiscal year 2022. The City of Boston and the Boston Retirement System were on schedule to reach full funding of the unfunded pension liability by 2025, four years from now. However, last spring, as mentioned earlier, the city extended the funding schedule to 2026 out of concern for the uncertainty around the pandemic's impact on the markets and thus the city finances. Even before the pandemic, the Research Bureau has been concerned about the city of Boston's sizable long-term unfunded pension and retiree health insurance liabilities and their implications for future city services. The Research Bureau recommends that a COLA-based increase from $14,000 to $15,000 should not be considered until the city is no longer relying on federal funding to address the city's fiscal challenges caused by the pandemic. And once again, back on solid financial footing. In the meantime, the city could and should continue to apply federal funding to address the needs of the community as impacted by the pandemic, particularly those most vulnerable financially. The federal financial support through President Biden's American Rescue Plan must be used by December 2024. And hopefully, well before then, we will have a much better understanding of the extent of the city's recovery versus the extent of long-term negative impacts on the city finances and the Boston community's needs due to the pandemic. The proposed COLA base increase, the impact on the city's pension liability, particularly at this difficult time, must be considered in conjunction with the pandemic and the impact on the economy, the city's ability to address financial demands of departmental services, the challenges faced by Boston community, and the looming cost of the retiree health insurance, health insurance liability known as OPEP. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Pam, um, for that testimony. And uh, are there any counselor? Further council questions at this time? I don't see any. All right, seeing none, um, I think I'll just, uh, I think I'll just thank everybody. Um, again, thank Tim for coming. Thank everybody who testified. Appreciate, again, you know, I think the the testimony from the retired teachers in BTU and the testimony from the Municipal Research Bureau attest to the kind of balancing act that we always have to do with these decisions. Um, and uh, and that's our, our responsibility as counselors is to take the human element into consideration, um, uh, you know, in the context of fiscal responsibility. So um, as I as I mentioned before, as the chair, I will be um, recommending that this docket ought to pass on the 30th, contingent upon us also having the funding um, 
allocated. You know, we have to that we we can't pass it and not have the money to do it. Um, so uh, that's going to you know these things are all kind of tied together, and because of that. We've actually we're, we've continued to notice this docket along with the other budget dockets for the hearings and working sessions that we've got coming up in the week because it's all um, interconnected. Um, but uh, but I appreciate um, Tim your work and the work of the retirement board. Um, and if you would just send those materials over, we'll make sure they get circulated to the whole council. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, and um, with that, this hearing of the Boston City Council's Ways and Means Committee is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.